This is me spending way too much time cleaning up code across several app script projects because I tend to reuse parts of my code all the time. And I have a ton of projects, which means it took me a while. Could have probably saved a bunch of time if I used the shared library. Wait, shared libraries, explain. It's basically a way to use the same code across like multiple projects. How's that different from copying and pasting? Well, you're not really copying and pasting the code from one project to the other. Wait, I don't get it. So are you using the same code or not? Yes, but you're not copying and pasting. So what you're actually doing is you're connecting to that shared library and because you're connecting to it, you gain access to all of the functions that are available within it. So if there's a, a change made to that shared library, that code is immediately available to any of the other projects that have connected to it. So kind of like a hive mind, yeah? Uh, it's not really like that. It's not controlling the other projects. Uh, it's more like sharing itself with those projects, kind of sharing as knowledge with them. Um, so you can kind of think of it like those travel websites. Um, they all pull from the same flight information um, database. So any price changes are immediately reflected on all the uh, travel websites. Um, so it's kind of that same concept. All right, I guess that makes sense. Would it be better if we walked through a simple example? Yeah, that'll be better. Okay, so let's take this small code snippet for example. It's a simple way to look up the row index for a value, something that I actually use quite often, uh, especially when I need to match up data in a sheet using a value like an ID or a key identifier. And over the years, I've rewritten this code quite a bit, you know, either to make it run faster or just make it easier for myself to read. Every now and then, uh, I actually have to go back to a previous project because maybe something broke. Uh, and I typically find these older versions of my code where I don't even remember why I wrote it that way. Even if I try to go back and clean up the code, I always randomly find those old outdated versions from time to time. They kind of just pop up uh, when I least expect it. So by using a shared library, I only need to update the code in one spot and it'll distribute itself to all the other projects connected without me having to even open up those projects, saving myself lots of time and headache. All right, that sounds useful. How do I set one up? So to turn your project into a shared library, what you'll have to do is deploy it as an API executable. And to do that, you'll also need a Google Cloud Platform project. Hold up, what's Google Cloud Platform? Google Cloud Platform is part of Google's various uh, services that it provides for cloud computing. It comes with all sorts of tools, uh, and you can build cool apps and stuff uh, with that. BigQuery is a part of that Vision API. There's a bunch of things that, that it has. Uh, and everything that we're gonna be using is actually gonna be free. Uh, but they do have a $300 credit for a new user, so make sure to check that out if you don't already have a GCP account. Oh, they shouldn't have. So all we're doing is switching our App Script project from the default cloud project run by Google to a standard cloud project that is managed on your own Google Cloud Platform account. To do that, we just have to input your project ID into the settings page of your App Script project. That's all we need to do? Well, not quite. There's still two more steps. The first one is deploying it. So if you go over to the giant deploy button and then follow the steps to deploy it as an API executable, that's going to be the first step. Now, the second step is to copy down the script ID of the project that you just converted into a shared library. Now, once you have that ID, you can go to any other project that you want. And within there, you're going to see a library section in your files. So open that up, search for the script ID, and make sure you select head to uh, always have the latest code. Once you have that, you'll be able to reference that shared library using the identifier. In this example, shared library demo is how we're gonna do it. Then you can call any of the functions that are available in there and run it according to whatever was deployed in that shared library as an API executable. And there's a lot of ways to use a shared library. One of the ways I like to use it is actually for like lists of IDs or keys, like API keys. For example, uh, that's a really great way to use it. I've also found them really useful if I wanted to create a, an API service. So for instance, this Airtable uh, API service that I created, that way I don't have to rewrite it every single time and just hook up the library and I have access to all the Airtable calls that I've written in the past. Uh, you can also use it for just like a really simple micro architecture. 
uh, if you have a lot of projects doing certain things, but there's, there's tons of ways uh, to, to do it. So I make a lot of use out of shared libraries. I'm sure you will too. It's a great tool to have in your arsenal when you're fighting against repeated code, trying to keep things clean and trying to avoid any of that old code that can come back and haunt you. But if you have any questions, leave a comment in the section below. Otherwise, this is Bootstrapping Tools. I'm a guy called Joe. It's been a pleasure and we're out.